Today we're gonna to make a rhythmic cubist guitar painting based on the artwork of Pablo Picasso with a twist. In our artwork, we're gonna focus on creating a big sense of rhythm. Now, the reason why we are highlighting rhythm is because rhythm is that sixth principle of design after balance, contrast, emphasis, movement, and pattern. In fact, rhythm is very similar to pattern However, pattern is a little bit more rigid. Pattern means when something repeats in a certain order. Rhythm is different. Rhythm has repetition, but is not very orderly. In fact, rhythm is created when one or more elements of design are used repeatedly to create a feeling of organized movement. Rhythm creates a mood like music or dancing. To keep rhythm exciting and active, variety or having different different elements is essential. So we are gonna create our own rhythmic cubist guitar. In order to do this project, what you are going to need is a blank piece of paper. You are going to need a pencil with an eraser. You're also gonna use a black marker, uh, as well as colored crayons and watercolors. If you have watercolors, that means you're gonna need water and a paintbrush as well. If you don't have watercolors, remember, you can just use colored crayons to color in. Okay, the number one step that we're going to do is we're gonna draw out the different sort of abstracted shapes of our guitar. So what you wanna do is you wanna take out that blank piece of paper and you wanna lay it down in portrait orientation, meaning it's tall and skinny. Then you're gonna put your pinchers on either side, pinch from side to side, and crease, folding it in half from side to side. Then you're gonna open it back up, okay? You should have a nice vertical line fold right down the middle of it, dividing it in two halves. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get out that pencil and somewhere I wanna say, uh, once we fold it in half from side to side, we're gonna get our pinchers out from top to bottom. And you are going to bring that top pincher down to the bottom pincher and fold it in half from top to bottom. When you open it up, you should notice a horizontal line crease. That way we should have four sections. One, two, three, four. Um, different rectangle sections of our uh, piece of paper. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna grab your pencil and about halfway down in between the center fold and the top of the page, you're gonna to wanna to make a little bit of a mark. Also, halfway down, halfway um, between the center fold and your bottom of your page, you can create another dot on the vertical fold. What we're gonna do is on this top half, we're gonna do a curved line in and start going out kind of like a letter S. So what we're gonna do is take your pencil, you're gonna curve it out, slightly in and out, just like that. It doesn't have to be a full letter S, it can stop right there. Then what we're gonna do is from where we started, we're just gonna create a nice curved line that goes out and then hits that mark on our fold. So take your pencil, curve it out, in, stopping around that dot. Nice. Now, is, if yours is a little bit different from mine, remember, it's okay. As long as we kind of have that half of the guitar shape, we're, we're a-okay. Then we're gonna take our pencil, we're gonna draw that vertical line from one dot to the bottom dot along that vertical fold. Awesome. Now just shift your pencil from the top of that shape that we just created a little bit down. I would say maybe like a half inch. What we are going to do is we're gonna create the second half of our guitar, except shift it over, ending a little bit further down. So you, if you would like to, you can even put a dot right there and a dot about a half inch further down on that vertical fold as well. We're gonna do the same thing, except this time when we go out, we can keep most of our curved line within this uh, rectangular shape and have it curve out down below, hitting that bottom dot. 
So again, take your pencil at that top dot, you're gonna curve it out and slightly in, almost like a half circle almost, and then once it hits that fold, you're gonna curve it back out even wider and back in around that dot. To complete the shape, just make that small vertical line along the fold. Awesome. Okay, so about halfway in our guitar shape, we can make a nice little trapezoid. Trapezoid meaning one um, bottom shape is uh, shorter or longer than the other with diagonal lines on the side. And then we're gonna make a small little circle on the inside of our trapezoid. That's the bottom kind of fretboard, starting of the fretboard of our guitar. From there, what you can do is you can bring from that trapezoid, almost a little bit from the, uh, about halfway from the fold to the end of it, you can bring a vertical line up past our shape, stopping about halfway from the top of the page to um, from the top of the page and the top of our guitar. It's right there. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So find halfway between uh, the fold and the end of our shape, bring that line up, whoop, and stop where we ended the other one. Okay, if you wanna add a couple more strings, you can add two strings on the inside. If you wanna just keep it with the three strings, that's up to you, okay. Now I have my guitar, I have the board where my uh, strings come out of. Now I'm gonna do the top part of my guitar. Now what you wanna do is along that fold, on the top of our shape, we can make another vertical line, go along that vertical fold, almost going towards the top and stop. Okay, we can draw a small little line here the top of it and you can make the top of your guitar shape any any shape that you want maybe you want instead of a trapezoid you want it to make a nice curved line on one side and then maybe angular on the other up to you but once you have just the top of your guitar you can even put some designs a couple circles of where those strings would now connect Okay, cool. Now that we have the general shape of our Cubist guitar, you can start adding lines that just separate the negative space. Negative space meaning the background space. So, like I said, you wanna keep these lines kind of angular, but also you can have some nice soft curve lines. And it would be very rhythmic if you had certain things or elements repeat. So for example, I love this circle motif here on the top of my guitar. I might find another um, area in my negative space to uh, do the same sort of design or shape. So maybe along this side, I might mimic what is over here. So I'm just gonna make the same shape that I did. And again, depends on how you made that shape and put, add those two circles except slightly larger. Nice, so the shapes of it repeat, but kind of in an unusual way. One is bigger than the other. Again, I can just take my, my pencil and I'm just gonna create lines that break up the shapes, but I can repeat some of my other uh, shapes that I have created. So if I do like this kind of curved shape, I might make a curve over here that looks similar to this one and down, okay? You can even overlap some shapes as well. Just dividing your page into just smaller sort of sections. There's no right way to do this. Just take, use your imagination, use your creativity. Think of what types of lines or shapes you want to break up your space. All right, that looks pretty good to me. If I feel like I wanna add some more things, I can add them later. But if you like what you've drawn, that means you can take out your black marker and we are just going to outline over the pencil lines that we've created. Okay, so you can take out your black marker. Any line that you have created in pencil, you're just gonna outline now in black, okay? And again, there was no right way 
to draw these lines. In fact, if you made your lines different from mine, that is very creative and you were definitely taking the art challenge. Um, I'm gonna go into warp speed to finish outlining all of my pencil lines. Now that I've outlined all my lines in uh, black, I can start adding just some patterns in my crayon and even my black marker if I wanted to in the different shapes that I have created along my page. So you can use any colors you want, but first we're gonna start off with crayon and in any individual shape that is enclosed, you can take a, any color really, and just draw a simple pattern. And a pattern can be as simple as just lines repeating um, over and over again. But the whole key is you're gonna fill in each enclosed shape with a different pattern and trying to keep different colors. So I'm going to fill in this one shape, awesome. If I do want to repeat my blue color, what I wanna keep in mind is to keep it balanced. Balanced meaning not all of my blue lines are gonna be in one area. I'm gonna find an area away from the one that I just filled in um, to color in my blue. So if I really wanna use my blue again, I'm gonna look for an area that's further away from that blue to have it here, and if I really want it to be balanced, again, I'm gonna make sure that they're not all in the same area. So I did one pattern and it even repeated. That means I'm, I'm gonna to try to uh, keep using different ones. And again, you can use different lines. Maybe I want this to be a zigzag line that repeats itself over and over. And if I want to use this again, but have it be balanced, that means I have to think it's gotta be in a different area. Maybe it's gonna be on this half of the page. So maybe my, even the half of my guitar will have the repeat of that color and or pattern, just to keep it nice and balanced. You can use all different sort of colors um, and it's up to you if you want to uh, color in some of yours, especially if you want some areas to be fully black, maybe just small little circles if you want them to be black, that's fine. Okay, maybe I make this black. But when you're coloring in the different larger sections, make sure you use colored patterns for there. And if you're gonna repeat that color, keep it balanced. All right, I'm gonna go into warp speed to fill in all of these enclosed shapes with different colored bat, uh, patterns, making sure that they're all balanced around. All right, I filled in every shape, enclosed shape, with different patterns and different colors. And anytime I repeated my color, I made sure that it was uh, in a different area that felt balanced, meaning they weren't all in, together in the same area. I even tried to keep a balance between warm colors and cool colors. Warm colors meaning reds, oranges, and yellows cool colors, meaning greens, blues, and purples. Now that all of my patterns are filled in and I even filled in in between the strings and the fretboards, I'm now ready to watercolor on top. And if you have watercolors, that means you can get out your paintbrush, dip it in the water, and you can choose any color that you would like to go over your um, patterns that you did in crayon, and they do not have to be the same color. So if you um, take your paintbrush and dip it in that watercolor and smooth it along inside that enclosed shape, you'll notice that the crayon or oil pastel pushes the watercolor aside 
so that the pattern still shows through which is awesome and so fun to play around with. So even when you're filling in each one of these shapes, you still wanna create that sense of variety. Variety meaning having a, a bunch of things that are different from one another. That variety is key to making it seem very rhythmic. So when you are adding your color, remember, try to have the colors be balanced, but yet, still have that sense of variety, meaning they're all different from one another. I'm gonna go into warp speed to finish coloring in with watercolor all my little uh, patterned shapes. Okay, I finished watercoloring in over my patterned shapes, and now my Cubist guitar painting is complete. Well, friends, I hope you had fun doing this lesson, and I can't wait to see yours.